This video is going to cover creating a shopping cart system using Rails 7 and Turbo uh, because the old video from Rails 6 is outdated now that Rails has broken everything under the sun that's JavaScript related. So we'll just go ahead, we'll get started by generating a scaffold for a cart and some orders, and then we'll just go from there. We're going to start by doing our products. So we'll say Rails G scaffold product. We'll give each product a name, a description of type text and a price of type decimal. And we're gonna give each decimal a precision of five and we're gonna give it a scale of two, which means it has two decimal spaces or places. We can then go ahead and hit enter. After we're done with that, we have our products. Now let's go ahead and do a Rails G model for the cart. And we'll just generate the cart out without any other attributes. We'll then say Rails G controller for the cart because we need a carts controller and we'll just give it a show action to generate a show page. Once we have that done, we can then generate one last model, which will be our join table between our cart and our products. So we'll say Rails G model, we'll call it orderable. We'll give it a uh, product colon belongs to and we'll give it a cart colon belongs to, and we'll also give it a quantity of type integer. We can then go ahead and hit enter on this to generate this last model. And now we can type rails s, oops, we can type rails db colon migrate uh, to migrate the database. And then we can type rails s to start the server. At this point, we're, we're pretty much done with the database portion of this tutorial. Now that we're done with this, let's come over to our config and our routes.rb. And in here, we're just going to define a few routes. We're going to start by changing our cart show page here to just be get cart and we'll change it to cart uh, show. That way we can just go to slash cart whenever we want to see what the contents of our cart are. We can then call post to the cart add and we can do the same thing to a cart remove action. And we'll use these later to add and remove products from our cart. And the last thing I want to do is just set the root of the application to be the products controller index action. I'll hit control S to save this. Come over here, hit control R to refresh. And if we go to the root of our application, you can see we have the products page with no products. Let's go ahead and let's create a couple. We'll call the first one a book, give it some words in the description and a price of $9.99. We can create that product, go back, and then we'll create one more. We'll call this one movies more words in the description and we'll give this a price of $29.99 and then we'll hit create. Now we have two different products that we can work with. Let's go ahead and let's close out of our routes because we are done in here. The next thing I want to do is render the uh, cart partial that we're going to be using on all of the pages that need it. So let's come into app controllers and the application controller. In the application controller, we need to do two things. We need to start by setting whether we should render a cart. So we'll just say before action set render cart. And this is just going to be a Boolean that we set inside of a method that just sets at render cart to true. Once we're done with that, we uh, can actually move on. But while we're in here, we might as well just set up the other method so we can be done with this. We want to do a initialize for the cart and all this initialize is going to do is whenever we get to a page, it's going to try and find the cart if we don't have it. So what we can do is we can say at cart or equals cart.find by the ID of session cart ID. Now, if it's still null after you try that, you can try to create your cart. In this case, we'll see if we can create our cart. In this case, we just check if the cart is nil. If it's nil, we call cart create. And then we set the session cart ID to be the at cart ID. Once we're done with that, we can exit out of our application controller and come into our views, layouts, and application.html.erb. In this file, what we want to do is render our cart partial. So we'll start by saying render partial. We'll pass in something. And we'll call this partial the cart slash cart. And we'll only render this if at render cart is true. So let's go ahead and let's create this inside of cart. We'll right click new file underscore cart.html.erb. For now, let's just put an H1 in here that says cart. That way we can see where it's rendered. And then let's come over here and refresh the page. We now have cart appearing on the products page, but if we come over to the cart page, we'll have cart appearing twice. 
So we don't want this to appear in our cart controllers uh, show action. So let's come over to our application controller, grab the set render cart right here, where we have the at render cart equals true. We'll come over to our uh, cart controller and inside of the show action, we'll just say set this to false. You can then go ahead and save that, come over here, refresh, and now it won't show up on the cart page, but it'll show up on the products page. Now let's come into the cart.html.erb and let's start by creating a turbo frame tag. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna say turbo frame tag, we'll call it cart, and then we'll just wrap everything in this. If you're not familiar with it, I have covered turbo before on the channel. I'd suggest checking out some of the other turbo videos, but the basic idea is in the controller, we're going to broadcast out a change to the application. And it's gonna look for a turbo frame tag to target. In the controller, we'll say send it to the cart frame tag, and here is where we're just calling it the cart. So it's just a way to sort of set where you're gonna be replacing stuff. We then have our cart text, and then we just check does our at cart dot orderables, which we still have to set up, dot count, uh, is it greater than zero? If it is, then we have some products in our cart, so we need to render our orderables. So we'll just say uh, render the cart slash orderables, and then we can do a p tag maybe for our total, where we just call uh, at cart.total. We can set that up in a minute here too. Uh, else we don't have anything in our cart, in which case we just want to say that uh, your cart is empty. Something like that, super generic, just something to get us through the day. Once that's done, we then come down here and we do another end for our turbo frame tag. We can go ahead and save that. Let's come over here, let's refresh the page you can see that we don't have this orderables in our cart. So our at cart already has an ID. That's good, it means it created the ID for us, but we need to now deal with the orderables. So let's come into our models and let's open up our product, our orderable and our cart.rb. So inside of our product, let's start here. A product has many orderables because it's gonna, going to belong to many carts and the carts are going to belong to many orders. So we need to go both ways. So first we say it has many of our join table, which we called orderable. Then we say it also has many carts through our orderables, which will let us do product.carts if we want, or we can do cart.products uh, if we wanna go the other way in a second here. So let's implement that other way by going into cart.rb. And inside of cart.rb, we're gonna mirror what we just did. We'll start off by saying it has many orderables, and then it also has many products through the orderables. That way we can call uh, cart.products. This also allows us to do something like this, where we say calculate the total. Inside of this, what we wanna do is we can either call products.sum or we can call something like orderables dot two underscore a dot sum. And then you can do something like orderable and then just grab the orderable.total. So because a product is gonna have a quantity associated with it through the orderable model, which we have to create, we want to go through the orderable to calculate the sum, but we wanna total it up for our cart for every single orderable item. So we might have two books and three movies, so we need to go into our orderables, and for the books, we need to say, what is the book times the quantity of the book times the price or whatever. And then the same thing for the movies. So let's go into our orderable and implement this logic. Now this is gonna be super advanced stuff, uh, but basically we're just gonna create a total method that grabs the product's price and multiplies it by the quantity. So this is just what we're returning into our cart.rb, which is then saying, hey, can you sum up everything in your orderable? So for each of the things, if we have two books and three movies, it'll come into here and it'll say, okay, you got two books. Those are 9.99 each times two. It's 18 something, 19 something. Uh, and then we come in here again and we say, okay, this time it's the movie's price, which is 29.99. We got three movies, so 29.99 times three. So it's like $108 or something. Uh, details really don't matter there for the numbers, but you get the idea. Once we're done with that, we're actually done with all three of our models. We now have the logic we need to implement this throughout our application. So let's come over to our products 
And in our products, let's go into the products partial. So this is the product partial right here, underscore product. In here, uh, we're going to get rid of these P tags because we don't need them anymore. We're going to then reformat this a bit just so that things are a bit easier to read. And then at the bottom here, we're gonna create a form. And at the top, we're going to put in a really confusing div. This div is just going to be a, a style that causes everything to be inline. So we'll just go ahead and create it like this. We'll hit Control S just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll come in here, I'll refresh. We have our two products. I wanna take this and just space it out a bit. So I'll hit Control B to hide the side panel. I'll give this a style and set the style equal to display colon flex. Then we'll move this div down to the bottom so that you can see these changes as they happen. So we do that, there's no more spacing at all. Now we wanna do a semicolon and then we just wanna say justify dash content space dash between. If we save this and refresh, you can now see everything is taking up the whole width of the screen. Let's now grab this and do one more where we say set the margin to be zero EM for the top and bottom and set it to be five EM for the left and right. We'll save this, refresh the page, and now these uh, products go towards the middle of the screen. It's not much, but for the sake of this tutorial, it at least gives us something a little bit better to look at. The last thing we wanna do down here is create a form. And this is gonna be a form for adding the uh, products to our cart. So we'll say form with URL. The URL is going to be the cart underscore add underscore path do F and then in here, we just need to do two things really. We need to create a F dot hidden field. This is going to be a hidden field for the ID and the value is going to be the product dot ID. So we're just gonna set this to be uh, whatever the product that we're passing in here's ID. That way we can pass the ID back to the controller as needed. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just going to create a number field. This is going to be for the quantity. It'll have a value of zero by default and a minimum of one because we don't want you to be able to add negative five items to a cart or zero items. It doesn't really make sense. Then we'll say f.submit, add to cart, and then we can go ahead and save this. We can come over here, refresh the page, and now we have this form where I can't go below zero. I actually can't go below one. But if I click add to cart, it says value must be greater than or equal to one. You can even set this to zero if you'd like, uh, but in my case, I just wanna keep it at one, but whatever floats your boat really. Once we have that, we're now done in our product.html.erb, and we're actually getting pretty close to being done overall. The only thing left to do at this point is to update our uh, cart controller and our orderables. So let's start in the orderables partial. So we'll come over to our cart, right click new file underscore orderables.html.erb, and then we can open this up. So this is just where we're gonna put the code that runs for each of our products as we add them to the cart. So we're gonna start by iterating through our at cart.orderables.each do orderable. And we can come down here, type end, and then the first thing we wanna do inside of this loop is create our product reference. So we'll just say product is equal to orderable.product. So remember, this is a join table between our um, cart and our product. So the orderable belongs to a cart and it belongs to a product. So you can do this. You could even grab the cart by saying order, orderable.cart. Once we have that, we're actually going to come back into our product partial and we're just going to copy everything in our product partial and we're gonna paste it into our orderable. So we'll just go ahead and paste this in. The reason why we're doing this is because some of this code just gets reused for the sake of styling. Um, but the ID here, which is the DOM ID for the product actually changes a little bit. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to say this needs to be the uh, cart dash and then the product underscore or product dot id so that just gives us our uh, the same thing as our turbo frame tag but here it's just a div i don't know why we have all these different options but it's essentially the same functionality so we're going to broadcast a update to this div so that we can replace uh, the quantity whenever we do something once that's done we have our name we have our description we have our price we have our form, 
but because this is the form inside of our um, uh, cart, we want to change this to uh, have a value equal to the orderable dot quantity. And we want to allow the minimum here to be zero because we want to be able to remove uh, the items from the cart. We can then grab uh, this form again and do something vaguely similar. We'll come down here, we'll paste it. This time it's going to be the cart underscore remove underscore path. This is going to have a hidden ID for the product. And then it's going to have a submit button and it will just say, uh, we'll just put in the letter X, I guess. This will be our remove button. Once we're done with that, we can then come below all of this and we can just say, let's add in a total for the orderable total. Now, before we move on, one thing I wanna do take a look at is when we do the form width for the removal, I think we can actually change this to be the orderable ID. And then we can leave this one as the product ID. This will allow us to come into our cart controller and in our cart controller where we have to do a remove and a add action, we can do a def add, and then we can do a def remove. In the def remove, we pass back the uh, orderable ID, in which case we can just say orderable.find by the ID that we pass back, which will be params ID. And we just wanna call destroy. That'll allow us to remove this item from our cart. In our add, we're passing back the product ID. So we want to say at product equals product dot find by ID params ID. We then want to grab our current orderable, which is going to be equal to the at cart dot orderables dot find by the product ID, which is going to be the at product dot ID. Once we have that, we can then do a couple checks. The first one we're gonna check is if the current order orderable exists and the quantity that we pass back is greater than zero. Now we do need to actually grab this quantity, so let's do that. We'll create a variable, call it quantity, and set it equal to uh, params quantity.2i. And then we can say, okay, we have a quantity greater than zero and we have a current orderable. That means we're trying to change whatever the quantity is. So let's call current orderable dot update and pass in the quantity. We can then say else if we have a quantity less than or equal to zero. In that case, you've changed your amount to like a, an amount that removes it from the order. In that case, let's just call current orderable dot destroy. And in the final case, we want to call at cart.orderables.create. We want to create an order orderable. And then we'll just say, do it for the product, which will just be our uh, at product. And then do it for the quantity, which will just be the quantity. Once we have that, we can now go ahead and save this. And if we exit out of here and refresh the page and scroll down, we can change this books to a one click add to cart. You can see here it was inserted, but nothing changed. If I refresh the page though, you can now see it's in the cart. If I enter this down, we can come down here, change this to two, it'll update it. We then have to refresh to update our total. And the last thing we can check is if we can remove it, we'll change it to zero, hit enter. We can scroll down here and you can see it was deleted. If I now refresh, it's gone. Let's add it again, refresh. And now let's click this X to make sure this also removes it that also deletes it. So that's all of our use cases there. Now let's make sure that these things happen in real time so that you don't have to refresh when you do this. To accomplish this in real time, we need to deal with a turbo frame nonsense. So we're gonna do a respond to for the format. And again, you can refactor this and break this up into separate methods. This is more of a how to, not a what to do, I guess. Uh, but we're going to start with a format for the turbo stream. So each of these are going to be in a respond to do block where we do a format turbo stream. We then call render. This is important. Render a turbo stream colon, and then we do a turbo stream replace. Now, in this case, you might get in trouble if any of the rails heads finds out, but there is a way to render two turbo stream replaces from inside of your controller, which is totally not best practice, but it's the easiest way to deal with this. So that's what we're going to do here. Inside of this array, you can do multiple turbo replaces. You can just do it uh, in a comma separated way. 
just like it's suggesting here. And that allows you to do multiple replaces. In this case, we're gonna replace the cart. We're then going to choose, uh, because this is our frame tag right here, we're then going to choose what we are replacing the cart with. We're gonna replace it with the partial for the cart. And we're gonna pass in some locals, which are gonna be the at cart. Once that's done, uh, we can try and clean this up a bit because it's trying all sorts of nonsense. We can then add the comma in here. And then we can add in, I guess, back the parentheses. There we go. Now we just want to save this so it gets tabbed over just like that. And now for our second replace here, this doesn't need to be the cart items. Instead, we just want to do a replace to the at product. The reason why we can do a replace to the at product here is because in the product page, it already has the DOM ID for the product. So it'll be able to figure this out on its own. And the reason why we're replacing this is because we're updating what our product uh, or what our orderable quantities are. And in the product page, uh, one of the things that we do is we set the default value to zero with a min of one, which means if I exit out of here, and I refresh. If we add in a item here, maybe we add a book. If we click add, that just is the thing that sets us back to zero because we're just replacing it with the blank uh, product uh, form. That just causes this to get replaced back to zero so that you don't have a lingering two right here. As an added consequence, because of the first bit right here where we replace the cart with the partial, you can now see all of this stuff up here is appearing and our total is updating. I can add like two to the uh, products here for the books, click add, this number changes to two, and then our total is now 1998. You could of course change this to not reset, uh, but for me personally, I prefer it if it uh, goes back to zero and then I just say I'm like changing the cart. It's ultimately what you want the user experience to be like. Uh, the last thing I wanna do is make this X button work in real time. To do that, we can come down to our remove and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll have a respond to do block with two ends at the bottom. We then need to do a render turbo stream. So we'll render out the turbo stream. This is just going to be the same thing that we did up here. So we can grab this entire block right here, copy it minus the opening bracket right there, paste it in, hit control S to save, and then this will format. I'll then hit F11 to exit out, refresh the page. And now I'm gonna click the X here and that removes everything. So clearly we've done something wrong. So let's go check out what's wrong. This is probably gonna be an issue inside of our orderables or inside of our cart. And it looks like it's probably inside of our cart. So we have this if statement here that renders the orderables. We have a P tag here, but we don't have a closing P tag and closing P tags can break everything. By adding that in, it tabs everything back over with the formatter. Now, if we come over here, we can add a book. We'll change it to two movies. We can then click the X on the book and it doesn't delete everything. You can see here that our movies are 59.98. I'll change this to one. Now the total is 29 and maybe I wanna add nine books. We now have a total of 119.9. And then if we come over to our cart page, You'll see we don't have anything in here, but we can of course add whatever we'd like. Maybe you wanna have a total order page in your cart show page. To do that, you can just close all of this, come over to our cart show page, and then we can just say something like uh, in our H1, you can say your cart, uh, and then maybe your total. We can just say uh, your total is and then we'll just pass in at cart.total, something like that. Refresh the page. Your total is 119.9. We can do that. Give us a dollar sign. And then we can just say something like uh, at cart.orderables.each do orderable. And then let me hit F11. We can then come in here, hit end. We'll create our product. So we'll say product is equal to orderable dot product. And we can just do, I don't know, something like a P tag where we have a um, product dot name. And then you can do uh, times, I don't know, times the quantity is equal to that. Sure, why not? 
we'll do that we'll refresh you could see you have one movie in your cart for 29.99 you have nine books maybe we even move the total down to the bottom and then you just create a button to do your checkout from here and you have all of your items now what's interesting about this is if we just come out of here we haven't signed in but we can of course close this open it up in a new window you can see we still have our cart we still have our session based checkout we can come in here we can clear our cookies so i'll just remove the cookies i'll refresh and now our cart is gone so we have those session based checkouts but if i add a book and i add five movies and then i open this up incognito and i go to localhost port 3000 you can see that it is truly session based and that these two uh, users are not sharing the same session so there's your turbo frame session based uh, shopping cart with your orders and everything being stored in your database um, in a way that allows you to persist your sessions whenever your user might leave and come back in a few minutes. So hopefully this was helpful. I'm sorry that the previous video no longer works, but unfortunately the js.erb files seem to have been deprecated in favor of stimulus. I figured this was a good time to show you that you don't even need stimulus to make this work. Uh, you just need some turbo frame nonsense as per usual. But that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next one.